Guys, it's Gabriel Israel with Agape Rack. Man, got a quick video that I'm trying to put together. Um, it was actually a quote that um Warren Buffett said. So we're gonna read the quote, watch a little video, then I might make a few comments um at the end of it. But let's get it in. Warren Buffett's five word phrase has been used as a lesson in how to invest in stocks. However, it is just as useful for buying cryptocurrency. Warren Buffett's five word quote, invest in the long term, isn't just a lesson in how to invest in stocks, but should be used in buying cryptocurrency. Warren Buffett's investing strategy is that the best way to make money is by investing for the long term and not fearing short term volatility. The same can be applied when buying cryptocurrency. Investors should buy cryptocurrencies with a long term outlook and not be afraid of short term volatility. Here is a video. From CNBC Crypto World. Today, Abra's Bill Barhite explains why he thinks Ether could hit $40,000. Plus, one of our anchors gets scanned into the metaverse. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Pippa Stevens. Cryptocurrencies were mostly flat after yesterday's steep declines. The market as a whole dipped by one-tenth of a percent by noon Eastern. Bitcoin fell by 1% and sat right below $39,000. Ether fell by about 1.2%, and XRP dropped by one-tenth of a percent. For more on the moves in the crypto market, Crypto World's Tanea McKeel spoke to Bill Barheit of Abra. Let's start with Bitcoin. Give us a snapshot of the market this week as you see it, and tell us where you think Bitcoin is going next and uh, you know maybe through this year. Sure. So uh, clearly uh, we're moving sideways uh, in a prolonged uh, manner. Uh, we started moving, basically, you could say we started moving sideways in, you could make the case either February of last year uh, or maybe September of last year, depending upon your perspective. But, but clearly we're, we've been in this kind of sideways channel. Uh, between let's say 35,000 and, and, and more or less 60,000 with a little bit of a band above and below uh, for about a year now. And what's interesting is, is, you know, Bitcoin had a massive infusion of cash, which was largely driven by uh, a couple of different factors, right? We had this grayscale ARP where a lot of traders were taking advantage of the fact that they could they could basically extract this premium by buying Bitcoin um, through uh, the Grayscale or in uh, Contango. So there was a lot of money to be made there. And neither of those is true anymore. Uh, and yet Bitcoin basically is still holding the uh, kind of middle, lower end of that band. You're actually more bullish on Ethereum than Bitcoin. So is that right? It's, it's different. I mean, I'm, I'm bullish on both, but for different reasons. Okay. Now, now, well, actually, that's not true. I'm bullish on both for an underlying reason that's similar, which is network effects. They're getting the network effects for different reasons. And they're both in different cycles, in my opinion, in terms of getting those network effects. Let me explain what I mean. Bitcoin is driving uh, network effects around becoming uh, kind of a, a, a reserve asset that is trustless, immutable, um, you know, and, and can't be stopped. Uh, can't be changed, you know, hard money, et cetera, et cetera. Those network effects continue to grow. They were interrupted via the China mining ban. And actually, I think that's what initially caused the channel to actually stop in the high 60s. I think it would have stopped in the 80s or 90s, and we would have gone sideways from there. Not a huge deal if you're looking, uh, you know, in terms of exponential growth long term, because I still think we get to 250K. But it's the network effects of Bitcoin going to become hard money or on its way to becoming hard money that are driving its adoption. Ethereum is different. Ethereum network effects are based on this idea that it could become the world's computer. It's being used for stable coins, being used for NFTs, being used for DeFi. Uh, we look, people looking at it for gaming now. 
um, with staking coming, I think there's going to be, you know, the rates are probably going to increase to 10-ish percent, which is going to, I think, going to show a massive influx of people trying to hold Ethereum, which is going to create more of a lockup. So the network effects for Ethereum in the short term are actually more bullish to me because of these use cases, right, that are just starting to play out. And if the gas fees and the transaction fees come down, which is the promise of proof of stake, look out. Okay, because now all of the impediments to those network effects are taken out of the way. Now, we may have a little bit of a of a sell the news effect uh, after the initial kind of rush to stake happens with the upgrade in June or July, whenever it happens, meaning the upgrade to proof of stake. So we may see a, a, a kind of a sell the news pullback. But but yeah, I think I think you're talking about, you know, potentially thirty, forty thousand dollar Ethereum. It's deflationary. Uh, the use cases are through the roof. Um, it, it's just all the stars are lining up for, for Ethereum, in my opinion, right now. Okay, pivoting to the rapidly growing business of the metaverse. We've discussed Andreessen Horowitz's multi-billion dollar investments in Web3 and the metaverse, and we've even told you about JP Morgan's new lounge in Decentraland. That same bank found that ad spending in the metaverse will grow to more than $18 billion by 2027 as businesses look to reach the growing user base. But how are businesses going to offer up real-life goods in virtual reality? Crypto World's Mackenzie Segalos traveled to Brooklyn to find out. The metaverse is becoming a massive industry. JP Morgan found that $54 billion is spent on virtual goods every year, and that number is only expected to grow. That's why numerous businesses are trying to put their brands and products into these digital worlds. Take Facebook's parent company, Meta. Not only did it change its name in 2021, it also spent $10 billion to embrace what it sees as the future of the internet. And you're gonna be able to do almost anything you can imagine. Get together with friends and family, work, learn, play, shop, create, as well as entirely new categories that don't really fit how we think about computers or phones today. Nike, well, it snapped up a virtual shoe company that made NFT sneakers worth more than $80,000. One company called Nightcap 3 d is helping businesses access the metaverse, and they let me take a tour. I'm standing inside of a photogrammetry rig. There are 206 Canon DSLR cameras placed at every possible angle in order to get the most accurate physical depiction of both physical objects and people. Companies are specifically coming to this studio in Brooklyn in order to use the rig behind me to scan their products, like sneakers and clothes, into digital avatar form. Startup NICAP 3D says that companies like Nike, G-Bot-G, LVMH, among others, have used them to digitize their product lineup. Yeah, so at NICAP 3D, we specialize in taking physical objects and turning them into digital assets. And we can also take those assets and change the material and turn them into a render. So this is a candle made out of a shoe, but it's really just a, a render of that taken from an actual 3D model of a shoe. So this is a raw model that we scanned here uh, and gives a good representation of what the shoe looks like and feels like. Getting scanned into the metaverse, from my perspective, is super simple. It takes three seconds, and then all 206 cameras go off at the same time. From there, it takes less than five minutes to come up with a 3D model. These digital avatars can be used with Hollywood special effects, augmented reality, and you can also mint them as non-fungible tokens or NFTs. It's also possible to insert these 3D models into the metaverse, which is a collection of virtual platforms where people can play games, buy land, and go shopping. Companies are even finding ways to show off these NFTs in the real world. Take NFT Caster, a platform that allows you to display non-fungible tokens from the blockchain by connecting your crypto wallet to a physical display. Today, it's basically a window to the metaverse. It lets you connect your crypto wallet to the tokens associated with it, which allows to fetch them and then display them in the real world. Up to today, there hasn't been any real use case on how to display them. So we ended up doing the LA Art Show uh, this year. Last year, we were at Art Basel. We were at NFT NYC, and basically the first solution to display NFTs in the real world. And experts say that the technology used today has near limitless potential for the future, including a fully digital, immortalized version of yourself. Technically, eventually, 
you'll have a, a bot like uh, like Siri that translates to your voice, and you could ask it questions. So your great 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 grandchildren will eventually see you in the metaverse and could ask you questions. Before we go, we want to let you know that Crypto World is heading to Austin, Texas, for South by Southwest. We'll be on on the ground talking all things metaverse and crypto. That's happening next week and you will not want to miss it. That's all for now, but we'll be back again on Monday and we'll see you then. Man, guys, that's just um, amazing to me um, the way that um, um, these companies, these major companies that we know about, these major brands are actually um, going in and investing in these companies. The goals that um, that man was speaking of, of um, Ethereum and the goals of Bitcoin. And the thing about that, the coins that's under them that actually uses the same um 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 technology or technology that need to be used by these other coins are actually going to benefit from the growth of the parent coin your your bitcoin your ethereum so the 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 future for cryptocurrency is is out uh, is amazing and i am um man e extremely excited um, about being a part of it. I hope you are too. And like Warren Buffett said, you know, um, let's look at it. Just his quote. This is his quote right here. Invest in the long term. Invest in the long term. So everything that I'm doing is actually the um, I'm thinking more of my generations that's going to come behind me. So I'm thinking more of them. You know, I wish, you know, me personally, I wish my parents or my grandparents had made some investments that were going to actually uh, benefit their offsprings the way that I'm planning to invest for my offspring now. So I hope, um, you know, we, we start to look at things different, um, see life as what's coming in the future, and and just continue to take care of yourself. Continue And like, hey, let me say this. I am not a financial advisor, just willing to teach people things that I'm learning. And you might say, why is this?